Hello and welcome back to another video of my Python and QuantConnect algorithmic trading course. If you're new to the series, make sure to start from the beginning since you otherwise might not be able to follow along properly. In this video you will learn how to create trading algorithms for Forex and CFD trading. In the previous videos, all the example trading bots exclusively traded equities. However, all the lessons learned in those videos are just as important for Forex trading. Besides that, I will show you how to create custom plots when we get to implementing the example Forex trading bot for this video. The main difference between trading equities and Forex inside of QuantConnect is that instead of adding equity data in the initialize method, you add data for the currency pairs or CFDs that you want to trade. This can be done with a simple add Forex statement. When adding currency pairs using the add Forex method, you would usually specify three arguments. The first is the currency pair itself. This could, for example, be Euro USD. For a full list of the over 50 supported currency pairs, check out the link documentation page in the description box below. The second argument is the resolution, which can be anything from tick resolution to daily resolution. The third argument is where you specify the market that you want the data for that currency to come from. Currently, QuantConnect supports two markets, namely OANDA and FXCM. OANDA supports 71 pairs and FXCM supports 39 pairs. Note that the OANDA data uses the GMT time zone, while FXCM uses Eastern Standard Time. It is also possible to set leverage as another parameter of the add forex method. By default, there is no leverage though. One of the main differences between forex and equity data is that forex data only supports quote bars and no trade bars. The difference is that quote bars are built by consolidating bids and asks from exchanges, while trade bars are built from actual trades. For more details on quote bars and trade bars, check out the fourth video of this series. Before we move on to implementing an actual example forex bot, let me quickly show you how you can add data for CFDs. Since this is very similar to Forex, I will not create an actual trading bot for CFDs in this video. The CFD data also comes from OANDA, which currently supports 51 different contracts. However, note that live trading these contracts is only supported for non-US residents at the moment. To add CFD data, you can simply use the add CFD method, which works pretty much the same as the add Forex method. For a full list of the supported CFDs, check out the documentation page linked below. That said, let's now move on to implementing a Forex trading bot. As always, I will start with a brief theoretical breakdown of the bot that we will code. For this video, we will implement a simple mean reversion strategy on the EURUSD currency pair. The idea is that we expect the price to stay somewhere around its 20-day mean most of the time. In other words, we do not expect it to deviate from its 20-day moving average too much. However, if it does deviate by more than a certain amount, we take the opposite position and try to profit from the price moving back to its mean. To measure the degree of deviation, we use the standard deviation. If the price moves above its 20-day moving average by more than two standard deviations, we take a short position and if it falls below its 20-day moving average by more than two standard deviations, we open a long position. In either case, we close the position once the price crosses its 20-day moving average. Luckily, we won't have to implement this logic manually since there already is a ready-to-use indicator that does exactly what I just described. This indicator is known as the Bollinger Bands Indicator. To better understand our algorithm, we will plot the Bollinger Band Indicator as well as mark the points where the algorithm opened and closed positions on a custom chart. With that said, let us now head over to QuantConnect and start writing the actual code for this trading bot. If you haven't already, make sure to create your free QuantConnect account using the link in the description box below. For the best learning experience, I highly recommend coding along, but I will also post a link in the description box that allows you to clone the finished code from this video. Inside of QuantConnect, we will create a new algorithm in the lab tab. Then we will start off by implementing the initialize method. For this, we first set the backtest timeframe to the last 6 years. Thereafter, we leave the starting cash balance to be $100,000 for now. 
Now, it's already time to add the data for the forex pair that we want to trade. I will be using the Euro USD pair for this example, but feel free to try this with other currency pairs as well. To add the data, we use add forex. As the first argument, we specify Euro USD. As the second one, we pass daily resolution. And as the third, we will use the FXCM market. Note that you could also use another resolution or the OANDA market instead. We then save the symbol of this pair into the self.pair class variable. After adding the data, we want to create a Bollinger Bands indicator for this currency pair. We can do this with a helper method self.bb, which takes three arguments. First, we pass our pair so that the indicator knows for which data it is. Then, we specify the period that it covers and last but not least, we define the number of standard deviations that the upper and lower bands will deviate from the moving average. The most commonly used parameter values here are 20 days and two standard deviations, which is what we will use here as well. Now, let us move on to implementing the onData method. The first thing we do in the onData method is check whether the Bollinger Bands indicator is ready to use already. If it's not, we just return, since we can't use it yet. Then we save the current price of our currency pair into a local variable named price. We can access the price by indexing the current data slice. Next up, we want to decide between two different cases. In the case that we aren't already invested, we check whether the current price is below the lower Bollinger Band. If it is, we want to buy as much of EURUSD as we can. We can accomplish this with set holdings. If instead the price is above the upper two standard deviation Bollinger Band, we want to establish a short position. To do so, we once again use set holdings. The other case would be that we are already invested. Here, we need to implement the exit logic of the strategy. For this, we first check if we currently have a long position open. If that's the case, we check if the price has crossed above the middle moving average line of the Bollinger Band indicator. If it has, we just liquidate the position. If we do not have a long position, we must have a short position. In that case, we need to check if the price has dropped below the moving average. If it has, we once again use self.liquidate to close any open positions. Now, we are already finished with implementing the trade logic of this bot. However, before we move on to backtesting this bot, let me show you how you can add and create some custom charts. I will create a chart that plots the price of the currency pair and all three lines of the Bollinger Band indicator. Furthermore, I will add symbols to this chart to indicate where this algorithm bought and sold. This can be very helpful when trying to understand when the algorithm made which trades and why. For this, we first head back to the initialize method and create a chart with the name trade plot. We save this chart into the variable stock plot. Then we will add three series to this chart. By default, new series will be line plots. However, to mark the entry and exit points of the trades, we want a scatter plot instead. We use add series to add a series to the stock plot. To create the series, we use the series constructor and pass five arguments. The first is the name of the series, the second is the type, the third argument determines whether the label is for the x or y axis, the fourth argument is the color, and the final one specifies the shape. For all the details of different types, colors and shapes of these charts, check out the documentation page that I linked below. 
In total, we add three series for buys, shorts and liquidations. After that, we add the chart to the algorithm. Next up, we have to specify which data we want to plot in the onData method. First, we can add plots for the Bollinger Bands and price of the currency pair. We do this with self.plot, which I've used many times in the previous videos. Then, we need to add the data for the entry and exit markings. For this, we also use self.plot, but since we specified there to be three scatter plots in the initialize method, we can use them here. So when buying, we mark the chart with the entry symbol at the price of the entry. We do the same for shorting and when we liquidate any positions. With that, we can now click on Build and Backtest to look at the results. As you can see, the results over this time frame seem to look relatively good. The strategy managed to achieve a return of almost 27%, which is not bad, especially considering that the EURUSD currency pair traded pretty much sideways over the same period. On the right hand side, we can select to view our custom trade plot on which we plotted the price of our pair, the Bollinger Bands and the entry and exit markings. With all these plots visible at once, the chart is quite full. However, it is also possible to deselect some of the plots to make it cleaner. If we, for example, only select the price, entry and exit plots, you can clearly see when this bot bought, shorted and closed positions. The green triangles mark buys, the red ones mark shorts and the blue dots mark exits. If you want to analyze this backtest report in more detail, feel free to clone this algorithm using the link in the description box below. In the next video, I will go over how you can trade options within QuantConnect. That said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are a fan of this series, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching.